Hello, people from around the world. I am CGTN's Xu Xingchen, and look behind me. I'm just say that、uh, I am scared of the height, but right now I am over 400 meters above that、uh, river surface, and that river is the Jingsha River. It's one of the upstreams of China's longest river, the Yangtze River, a very important river that actually. Somewhat started off China's civilization, and currently, we are live in Southwest China's Lijiang City. It's a beautiful touristy, tourist, touristy city. I'm very nervous right now, seeing the height behind us, and we're visiting one of the one of the largest bridge here in the world. And to be more specific, surf,、uh, specific, this is one of the this is actually the largest mountain suspension bridge. With the longest bridge span in a mountainous region, it stretches over 1,000 kilometers. And we're going to learn more about that. But speaking of this, it's not just about the bridge. It's also about how this bridge has changed this region, this valley. And we can see right across us those little houses. There are villagers, villages scattered around over there, and、uh, there are people living over there. And this bridge, along with highway connect with this bridge, changed how people connect with the rest of China and the outside world. And it has been helping locals to sell more, to travel farther. And that's we're going to learn more about this. How infrastructure has been helping China's efforts to alleviate absolute poverty. As we have to mention this,、uh, in 2021, China has successfully eliminated. All absolutely poverty. That means lifting almost, or actually some, a、uh, hundred million people out of poverty. That's a lot of people, you know. But of course, China, 1.4 billion people. And to learn more about this bridge, and of course, on top of this tower, and here with us, we have Liu Hengnan, one of the engineers from China Communications Constructions. And build this bridge, and we're going to learn more about this bridge. And、uh, Liu Gong, you're welcome. Let's give our viewers a hello. Hi, everyone. So first, let's see because we are in the Valley Region. And speaking of the 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 Jingsha River, actually, the history of this part of the city can be traced back to over 800 years ago. And of course, some people would say this place also has gave birth to Chinese civilization. Civil civilization. Civilization over a hundred thousand years ago. But speaking of the valley, it's a narrow valley. It's very. We have steep mountains. So, tell us about the, the regional uh, territorial uh, characteristics of this region. Just 讲到我们其实现在在峡谷里面嘛，就是我们看到这个峡谷，这个我们的地形是什么样的一个状况啊，刘工？这个其实是两岸的一个呃非常陡峭的嗯一个峡谷嗯。呃，峡谷地貌，咱们现在在的这样的金沙江这样的这个地面的这个坡度啊，大概在四十度到五十五度之间。四十度到五十五度啊！我先来翻译一下啊。So for our viewers, uh, the valley. Let's see the mountains right across us. It's very steep and has an angle, diagonal angle, of forty-five degrees or to until like fifty-five degrees. So very steep. 所以其实很陡峭啊，对，很陡峭，特别是丽江这样，那、嗯、个对岸呢要缓一点。啊、so actually, the other side of the valley is not as steep as, uh, the 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 side that we are back towards. 要不我们来看一下后面的这个。This is much steep. The other side of the mountain. Look at that. It's almost. It's <laughs> that's very steep. To be honest. So. This is a very narrow and a steep valley, and constructing such a huge, large bridge with the, the world's largest、uh, span in a mountainous region. So, what are some of the technological breakthroughs? Because we talked about we're in such a small space, uh, just actually our this this breadth is very 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 long, right? The world's first breadth. Do we have any technological breakthroughs? 这个技术上面，其实我们嗯、呃，为了跨越这个峡谷啊，设计上面呢，嗯，采用了主跨是一千三百八十六米的这个钢那个钣含结合的钢含量悬索桥。嗯
，这个这个跨度呢，应该说是世界上，呃，山区峡谷，嗯，呃，悬索桥的这个最大跨界。嗯，是一千三百八十六米。八十六米。对，主跨。So let's see the main span. So right across over there. So the main span stretches. One thousand three hundred, 一千三百八十六米 One thousand three hundred and eighty-six meters, and that's so far the longest, long, uh, the long longest、um, bridge span in a mountainous region. Because we actually see, we have two bridge paths. Actually, our main bridge is from here, or is it? 对，主跨就是从这个塔的中心到那个中心。Mm. So just to clarify a little bit about the span, is we are standing on top of one of the towers to really lift the bridge, and that's the span、uh, length is the distance from this、uh, tower to the other side of the tower. 但其实我们可以看到，它就是两条主梁这么拎起来的嘛，对不对？那是不是有一些就是我们有很多困难是需要我们克服的呀？呃，在困难这一块呢，其实呢，我们在过程中啊，这个主要的困难应该说，工序吧，嗯，工序这块每一块每一块呢都有困难，这个都都有难点，应该说。嗯、我先翻翻一下 ，So I just asked Mr. Liu about, uh, we've solved the technological breakthroughs. It's one of it has one of the longest longest, uh, bridge span in a mountainous terrain, mountainous area, and I just asked Mr. Liu what are some of the challenges. The construction team have、uh, have to conquer in order to really make this、uh, this bridge possible. And Mr. Liu said, from almost all the procedures, can was quite challenging. 那么具体有哪些困难我们克服了呢？这个在回答这个问题之前，能不能把您先第一个问题我再补充一下？可以，没问题。对，好吧。呃，您刚刚第一个问题呢是问到有哪些技术突破？嗯，其实我刚刚说了，只只是说了一个这个桥梁的主跨，嗯，是吧？嗯，另外呢还有三个，因为我们也是创了创下了这个世界之最的。嗯，所以我先我先我先翻译一下。So actually, Mr. Liu said, in addition to the longest bridge span, there are also other three technological breakthroughs. And before we jump onto the challenging parts that the construction team has encountered during the construction time of six years, to be honest, and、um, and he, Mr. Liu, wants to share more about the technological breakthroughs. 呃，我们还有哪些其他三项是？对，这个刚刚说了一个跨度，跨度呢，现在呃就是结合这个跨度呢，我们现在看见我们底下，您把那个镜头扫视一下底下，我们这个桥呢是上下行是四车道的，嗯，然后这个梁的宽度呢设计是二十七米。So let me， 呃呃，我先翻译一下。So what we are seeing right now on the screen, we can see the main span, and it has four lanes, uh, two directions. And the length is R two meters, right? The width of this road is twenty seven meters. So, this way, this bridge width is one point five one. It's very good. One point five one bridge width. This bridge width in the bridge is the bridge width in the bridge in the mountain bridge. This bridge width in the bridge in the mountain bridge is the bridge width in the mountain bridge. So, the ratio between the width of the roads and the length of the bridge span actually is. It's pretty narrow. It's one of the narrowest, narrowest. 那其实讲到我们如果这个比比比较小啊，那是不是抗风能力也得很强啊？呃，对，它这个宽挂比呢，就是主要就是给结构上面带来的一个安全的一个又非结构上面的一个一个非常呃关键的一个指标嘛，就是这个对于抗风稳定性啊这一块要求很高。哎 ，So as we can see right now, it's pretty narrow. And we really have to talk about like how this bridge can withstand wind, especially right here in the valley area. And look,、uh, we have a little meter above there on the top of the tower, and that will give us the direction of the wind and、uh, how much wind that currently we have. But it's far away; I cannot really see the the meter. Anyways, uh, 那其实也就相当于我们虽然这个呃这个比例很小。但是我们抗风能力是很强的，这也算是一个技术的一个突破。呃，对对对,对。那我们还有什么其他的技术突破吗？呃，另外一个呢，就是咱们为了这个干克服这个干桥面，嗯、呃，这个疲劳啊、开裂这个问题，嗯咱们整桥呢，这个桥面板优内啊，采用的这个呃全熔透焊接技术，嗯，也属于世界首次。嗯
So speaking of the welding technology here used, techniques used on this bridge is also different. Because on the surface of the road, as all the heavy trucks or just our little sedans and SUVs drive on that, uh, there will be cracks and tears off the road. Um, and especially because the road is on top of the steel frame. And how the welding techniques they used here is also uh, help to prevent fatigue from the the surface of the road. How they did that is actually the welding process goes through all the all the, the this, uh, this uh, steel plates. Because for some other uh, constructions of bridges, um, the welding is only on the connection point. It's not go through all the metal part. And so basically, we can see it's uh, So because what we how how they bring the bridge together? Because what we can see right now is only one road, but actually is into smaller pieces and to be connected. That we are going to see more clear about the construction of that later as we go underneath on the road. There is a maintenance uh, a walk that we can go onto that we can see more about the structure of the bridge. But it's one piece by another with the heaviest piece can be way up to over 200 tons. And the crane used to really bring uh, transport and bring the, the pieces together here is also one of the largest here in the world. Um, that it can actually uh, so the capacity for that crane is 220 tons and pretty capable of actually bringing this bridge together oh, and of course the longest span uh, uh so to really actually put the bridge, uh, the bridge on the on the mountains, of course there has to be uh, like pulling, pulling and locking and anchoring mechanisms, and they have to dug out holes. So the drilling rig, uh, the, the drilling uh, procedure can be very challenging because some of the rock is very strong and they need to really conquer that. Mm-hmm. 陈台它属于一个大体积的混凝土它如果和专机之间有个层台哦专机啊对对对对之间有个层台那个这个层台呢是对对是是很对对对对一直经交织成型的话四千方混凝土OK so I actually translate a little bit uh, off uh, just a little bit uh, let's zoom to the other tower over there so we can see the tower very tall and actually that tower is taller than ours <laughs> uh, because of the different uh, levels of the mountains and beneath the tower we can see concrete a concrete cornerstone if I can write over there, you know, 
that's the cornerstone. And、uh, of course, there will be the drilling process to really kind of put that cornerstone in place, and to in order to make that cornerstone possible. Uh, so four thousand cubic meters of concrete had to be poured in all at once to really create that corner stone. And also, I also learned there is another technology called spray concrete that's really、uh, solidify the surrounding area to make it sit in that area. 那么还有其他的困难是，嗯，对，在然后完了之后再说，咱们再说这个塔，嗯，你看这边我们现在所在这个这个塔呢是塔高是一百八十六米、嗯，当然不含这个安照啊，嗯，呃，对面的那个塔高呢是还要高一些，是二百二十二米、嗯，呃，这个、嗯、这个高度呢就造成了它这个高空作业的一个安全难度，嗯，就是安全风险非常高，嗯。So basically, as I had mentioned, the tower right across us that is a little bit taller than the one that we're standing on, and the one that we're standing on is about 180 meters tall, and the one across us 220 meters. And there is a difference in the two towers, and that creates、uh, additional risks for constructing this bridge because a lot of people have to be on,、um, you know, be in the middle of the air to put this bridge together. 那么我们这是怎么克服的呀？那个讲到这个高低的这个，这个就是这个高空作业啊，它有个安全风险。嗯，这个对这个，我们当时施工这个塔的时候呢，是采用的这个爬木技术。嗯，所以你这个安全管控啊，全部都是基本上全部都是全封闭嘛。哦，哎，每一层啊，全、哦、全封闭，这个安全管控啊，必须要到位。So so that the the area is a stringent stringent safety, uh, procedures in order to keep people safe. Uh, you know, people are working in the middle of the air. Four thousand over four four、uh, hundred over four hundred meters tall.、Uh, for the time's sake, we need to jump here, and, and we can see this door over there. Because time relation, maybe we need to jump here. Because time relation, maybe we need to jump here. Because time relation, maybe we need to jump here. Because time relation, maybe we need to jump here. Because time relation, maybe we need to jump here. Because time relation, maybe we need to jump here. Because time relation, maybe we need to jump here. Because time relation, maybe we need to jump here. Because time relation, maybe we need to jump here. Because time relation, maybe we need to jump here. Because time relation, maybe we need to jump here. Because time relation, maybe we need to jump here. Because time relation, maybe we need to jump here. Because time relation, maybe we need to jump here. Because time relation, maybe we need to jump here. Because time relation, maybe we need to jump here. Because And speaking of the cable, that's the the charm of this、uh, suspension bridge. That's the suspension, you know, two cables that are really pull、uh, the bridge together and、uh, lift it up. And right here, all the steel cable. This is how much? Actually, actually, this is the main cable. 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 You know, really combine it together to to make the the main cable. Then every one has six, right? Yes, every one has one hundred and twenty-seven. And look at that. And that for each strand, there are one hundred twenty-seven steel wires inside of one strand of the wire. And to combine it together to make the main cable, there are over one hundred sixty strands of steel、uh, wire. That's a lot of steel. Actually, this is my first time to really see what the actual cable looks like. It's just like human muscle, like one strain by another, and that's the strong muscle that pull the bridge together. Brilliant! And let's get out of this crammed place. And I can see、uh, right over there. There are meters and、uh, machines. What are these for? 就刘光其实看到这些有些仪器嘛，这仪器其实就是是是一个这个温室啊，温度的一个监测。So basically, that's the fiometers, and also the meters to detect test the hum humidity inside of that、uh, cover chamber because these things are very important. We know steel steel cables might somewhat change its forms because of different temperatures and humidities. And that's the charm to keep it longer lasting and to keep it safe. There are a set of temperatures and humidity level needed to keep them in storage.、Uh, but speaking of this, such a huge bridge, what are some of the achievements that you feel, the feelings of achievements that you have from constructing this bridge? Because we talked about, we now, actually, from the moment, we talked about the Jing'an Jing'an Jiang Da Wall. Jing'an Jiang Da Wall is still the biggest bridge in the world. This bridge is the biggest bridge in the world. 跨度
呃，有什么成就感吗？觉得做这条，这个这个桥，成就倒是我自己个人倒是没有什么成就感。我觉得，呃，最大的其实有个感受吧。嗯。嗯，最大的一个感受呢，就是感受到咱们中交集团的这个大桥建造技术啊，确实非常精湛。啊，我作为这个中交一员啊，感到非常的自豪。So that's that's cool. That's very important, actually, because as I mentioned, this bridge, the Jing'an Jingsha River Bridge, is constructed by China Communications Constructions, and is one of the largest construction companies here in China. And Mr. Liu said, and he's very proud to be a part of this project and to be a part of the company, and uh, and to be able to construct this bridge. And I have to mention this because of this bridge. It, um, it is a part of a highway here in the mountainous area, and that uh, that highway uh, stretches from Lijiang to nearby Sichuan province. Uh, actually, eventually, will reach the city of Chengdu, and that will really gives a lot of opportunities in the surrounding area, in the villages. I actually visited one of the villages before I did the live when I was really looking around to see this bridge, and that village has like about 800 people. And they really have, I mean, they are heavily uh, reliant uh, on agricultural products, agricultural industries, like fruits. And it means a lot for them to really go out timely to transport their products outside of this region to really, get, you know, uh, to make a living off that. And previously, before this bridge was constructed back in 2016, that's the construction uh, first started and open to traffic by the end of 2021, locals have to drive on hilly roads, which are vulnerable to rainstorms and other natural disasters. And that means a lot of less business opportunities for local people to reach the outside world. And because of this bridge, now it's possible. And it's just one of the villages, and there are tens, dozens of villages surrounding this area that really will connect the region with outside China to bring more opportunity to this part of the region. And now we actually go under of the bridge. We're seeing the top of the bridge. Uh, hopefully our viewers never see what's underneath the road right over there, underneath of, uh, what's, what, what's it like underneath a, a, a suspension bridge. And we're going, uh, go down for a little bit, but of course the signal is really bad. And we're going to roll out a aerial shot for our viewers to see a little bit more of this bridge and of course the valley, the beautiful sceneries. And uh, let's now roll out the footage.
sorry for the interruption, for the delay, because we were four, over 400 meters above the valley uh, surface. And I just run down from there, from the top of the tower, which used to take people an hour, but it took me about 10 minutes. I just, you know, it, it, it's a joke. Uh, there is an elevator. So that's why that we have to cut the signal because we are inside of the elevator. And all, uh, but still, there is an elevator. We need to climb up and down. So there are a lot of stairwear cares um, so that uh, we need to really be careful. And uh, I'm going to introduce another guest right over here. As I have mentioned, we're going to talk to two engineers from China construction companies. And here we have... Uh, uh, Wei Lun. Mm, uh, so here we go. Look uh, over there. <laughs> That's how close we are. Uh, to, we, we are away from that uh, that valley. Valley, so we're not really close actually. Hey, Wu 老师，我们现在讲到，虽然这是跨度第一，对吧？第一跨山区，第一跨，但是其实我们的高度。目前我们是多高啊？离这个水面，我们一边走一边说来。嗯，目前我们站这个平台是呃在下海梁那个嗯顶面上那个是我们脚下是一个检修平台。嗯，然后到江面的话是在三百二十五米左右。Uh, some are, so right now we are working on for our viewers. If you are also scared of high, this is quite thrilling to see. Uh, so we are working on underneath the main road of this bridge. This is a um. A pathway from maintenance, and right now we are still over 300 meters, 300, uh, 325 meters, um, till that we reach that valley surface. I am shaking, to be honest. I'm trying to pretend I am very calm, but as I have mentioned at the beginning of this live stream, I am scared of height. And actually, this part is even more scary than the top of the tower because we can see through the floors. Right over here. Uh, 那么吴老师，我们先看一下，讲一下我们现在能看到这个结构有哪些啊？嗯，我们大家，我们现在看到最多的这就是一个，我们也是一边往前走一边。主桥的一个钢海梁结构，然后呃，主跨的就是横向间距的话是二十七米，就是一个缆距，然后每一个节间是十点八米长，嗯，高度的话是九点五米。好好，我先翻译一下啊。So what we're seeing right now is the bridge truss, uh, truss girder. That's the the main construction of the of the bridge, and Mr. Wu just told me all the specs of this uh, this component. Uh, our height is nine nine five meters. So for the height that we're seeing is about three point five meters, and the wide, as I mentioned, this bridge earlier at, on the top of the tower, twenty seven meters wide. 嗯，还有一个数据是什么来着？就是就是，嗯，我们每两个，你看我们现在看到的是每两个横梁为一个节间，嗯，长度十点八米，全桥共计有一百二十八个这样的一个节段。So what we can see right now, the there are two supporting truss putting one one whole block， 十八米，对吧？十点八米。十点八米。So for each of the block is one point eight meters， 呃，是个正方形的，不是正方形，是正方形吗？嗯。矩形的是一个长方形的，咱们横向是二十七米，二十七米。然后 the 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 length is eight point, uh, ten point eight meters. I'm literally shaking. It's it's even tougher right now to do the translation part. But right over there, I can see that what's that? It's a like little car or little moving mechanism. 就在那边我看到好像是有一个这个像机械臂一样，这个是什么东西啊？这是我们的一个下检修车，然后就是呃平常日常维护使用，就是主要是检查这个呃每两个节段的一个连接螺栓的一个是否存在松动情况，还有各杆件的一个焊接是否存在开裂。So that's is is actually one of the maintenance machine right right over here. So it can checks all the bolts and the welding process if there is any loosening happening or cracks. Let's go further down this aisle. 啊，就我真的特害怕现在，我真的是恐高，就有什么秘诀能够能够不恐高吗、嗯？咱们就是你尽量不看下面，咱们平视前方，这个就是心理作用就很快能够克服。哦，真的吗、嗯、？So I just meet Astro Mizu. 
um, I am scared of height, and uh, especially right here, because right now, it's running off my eyesight. I can see the river over here. I can see the mountains, and down underneath, I can see through all those floors. I just asked from Mr. Liu how that I can counter my fear of walking on such height, and Mr. Liu said that I can just level up my eyesight. I just see, you know, see into my camera person with all the laws from my eyes, and so that I can just ignore surrounding areas. But I think it works a little bit, but perhaps not as much, because I've been working on this uh, for several times already. Let's see the structures over here. 哎，其实吴老师啊，我又看到这个每一个这个柱子上有一个这个，这是橘黄色，这是什么？啊，这个是我们的一个玻璃钢假砂管，是玻璃钢了是吗？嗯，玻璃钢材质的，它是一个假砂管排水管，然后主要是收集上面行车道。呃，下来的雨水，然后集中汇入下面那个泄水槽，嗯、呃，再集中汇入城台的一个蓄水池，啊，作为后期的一个消防水使用。啊 ，So what we're seeing right now on the screen, that's the the draining, the drainage of this bridge, and that pipe is connected on the surface of the road. So when it rains, the water will go down through the pipe, down to this drainage, this tunnel over here. And that tunnel will go to a tank over there, and that water collected from the rain can be used for emergencies, for fires or other other、um, accidents or whatnot. Oh, 我还是挺害怕的。但但其实讲到我们看到这个，呃，就是我们的基，就是这个，就是这个基墩嘛，对吧？这个就是。边梁啊、哦、不不那个那个梯就是那个我们看到那个那混凝土的那个地方，是我们的一个边坡。边坡啊、嗯，这个边坡的作用是什么呀？嗯、主要是防护避免边坡上一个垮塌，将边坡上的一个土石锚固在我们当当时是打的锚锁框个梁，然后将通过锚锁锚住下面深层的一个稳固地层里面去的。啊 ，So what we're seeing right over there is like tiles, the little squarey things. And that is a way to actually to、uh, to support the steep、uh, mountain edge right over there. And for the blocks that we're seeing, there is an anchor behind that, at a pull into the rock, the mountain. So really to make it, you know, just sit there. Actually, we talked about this bridge. The bridge was built in 2016, from 2017 to 2018. Then from 2021 to 2022, the bridge was built. Actually, you were in the whole bridge, right? 对我全程参与，从一六年三月份就开始到这边，到现在，嗯，一直在这个项目。啊、uh, ，So I just asked Mr. Wu like his experience of with involvement with this project. I have mentioned earlier the construction of the bridge started in 2016,、uh, where they started the canvas where they should put the towers on. 呃，吴老师，我们换一下，我在这边。<laughs> so I need to switch my position because I feel more safe right over here.、Uh, And Mr. Liu said he has been here with this project since、uh, 2016 until you know it's been it's it opened traffic opened to traffic by the end of 2021。那讲到其实您老家不是云南对吧？对，我老家是四川资阳的。So I also asked Mr. Wu where he actually came from.、Uh, he's from a neighboring Sichuan province, a city called Ziyang. How far is it? 就资阳到我们丽江得多远啊？嗯。大概在一千二百公里左右。So the distance from Mr. Wu's hometown Ziyang right here is over twelve hundred kilometers. 因为其实讲到呃，我们这个桥其实也是高速的一部分嘛。嗯。现在您回家是否觉得这个我们这个路更好走了，或者时间其实节约了一些，对不对？嗯，对于我们是回家的话，如果说自驾的话，肯定是比平常要节约几个小时的时间。我们原来的话就是说，高速没通之前，我们走的是一个国道。嗯，呃，国道的话，从丽江到攀枝花上高速的话，需要四个小时。需要四个小时啊！我现在来翻译一下啊。So I just asked Mr. Wu, like, when he drives back home, and、uh, if there is any time difference between now and before the bridge opened to traffic. And Mr. Wu said, before this bridge, before the highway opened to the、uh, to traffic,、uh, people used to drive on the national、uh, national roads, not not highways, just regular roads. And he used to to take locals from Lijiang to Panzhihua, that's the nearest city uh, bordering uh, Sichuan, uh, about four hours. And now with this 
bridge open with the highway ready. Um, actually, the times the drive can be cut into half,、uh, two hours, reach Panzhuhua from Lijiang. 然后接下来从潘石花其实去到资阳那边已经是高速了，对吧？对，我们从潘石花上高速就，呃，全程呢就到家。嗯、mm. ，and of course there is a highway connection between 潘石花 and， 呃、uh, ，and and 资阳 ，which you know a lot of time con， 呃、uh, ，time save up right here， 呃、uh, ，with the highway and bridge open to traffic。但因为讲到其实。互联互通也好啊，以及讲到我们扶贫啊，在山区里面建高速、建大桥啊，您觉得基建怎么能够帮助我们的经济区域发展呢？嗯，通过我们的一个高速的一个建成通车，然后当地的一个农作物能够很快的，就是说通过高速能够运往全国各地。嗯、呃、比如说水果啊，我们像我们这边华丽江的华明县，它是以芒果为主。芒果、啊。哎、呃，然后我们这个大桥周边，它种植的是核桃还有桃子，当、哦、成熟的时候。嗯、呃，有外地的一些采购商到本地来采摘，哦、然后就能够很快这个运输出去到全国各地，能够。翻译一下。So I just asked Mr. Wu like how infrastructure this mega projects, like bridge and highways help local develop its economy. And Mr. Wu said because as I mentioned multiple times, villages around this area they are reliant on agricultural industry and they have been growing fruits and etc. And the neighboring town, uh. Actually, it's famous for its mangoes, and of course, some time, some people, some places will、uh, grow like walnuts, pe- pecans, and now with this highway open and a bridge open to traffic,、um, there will be dealers or、uh, f- you know people in、uh, fruit business. They can just visit here. They can harvest、uh, the produce locals、uh, grow and just transport it right outside. 因为其实讲到我们一个是运输的工程功能其实更强嘛，但又讲到丽江其实是一个风景很好，是一个旅游城市，是不是？其实现在有的就像您讲，你会自驾回家，其实是现在是不是？其实对于旅游业也是有一定的促促进的。对，对我们西南片区来说，呃，隔丽江很近的一些省附周边省市啊，比如说呃四川、重庆啊、甘肃啊、陕西这方面的一些游客可以通过自驾，呃，从成都过来。Uh, 经过我们高速的话，就很快能够到达丽江。啊、ah. ，So、uh, I actually just confirmed with、uh, confirmed with Mr. Wu,、uh, in addition to trade, better、uh, facilitations in、uh, in terms of transporting local produce outside, and this highway also serves a pretty important link for tourism. As I mentioned at the beginning of this live stream, we are now in South West China's Lijiang City, and Lijiang literally means a beautiful river. And we have the Jingsha River down、uh, beneath us.、Uh, it's one of the upstreams of、uh, China's longest river, the Yangtze River. And、uh, tourism has been improving, has been booming、uh, over the past decade here in this、uh, region. And with this highway and a bridge open to traffic near neighboring provinces, there will be more tour- tourists that might prefer to drive here and road trips. Road trips have been developing really fast、uh, in the past few years. Uh, not just high speed ra- high speed rails because China has been improving its highways linkage, and and also、uh, if I if I might forgot to mention this the the village that I mentioned village、uh, famous for its peach、um, and pomegranates、uh, right across the bridge right across the other side of the valley with only 800 people. And household house income in、uh, household income in the past decade actually grew more than doubled. That that's the real benefits that we can see through this larger infrastructure and bridge. I know I look pretty silly. I really have to hold on to something. And this is the third time I've been working on this. I'm trying to practice myself, trying to conquer my fear. You know, working on this high, but、uh, I think I still have a lot of more、uh, to watch for to to. to <laughs> to get used to, to, and look over there. Look at the valley. How pretty is this? The, the Jingsha River, one of the upstreams of China's Yangtze River. One of the most beautiful rivers that we can see in this part of the country.、Uh, my full talk really wants me to walk through this, this, this aisle. But、uh, I'm not tempted to, to do so <laughs> because、uh, now I'm not going over there. But 
my Fox is brave enough to go across this, 27 meters wide, and um, on that part of this, and <laughs> this this uh, this section on the other side of the bridge, we can have an even better, prettier uh, look of the valley. And look at that. My colleagues have been really encouraging me to go across this section of the bridge, but I just can't. I'm sorry. You know. I love being a journalist because every day I can try something new. I always need to get out of my comfort zone and to train myself to conquer all my difficulties. But look at that, that view, that Jingsha River. Beautiful sceneries and a pretty good economic boost in this part of the country. And we've seen this bridge. And hopefully that viewers love the live stream as my first ever experience to go on such a mega bridge. I'm going to confirm again with our viewers to re each read a little bit more this bridge. This mountain suspension bridge has the world's longest span in a mountain region. And the record might be soon taken away by another China bridge because similar bridge, similar suspension bridges have been building here in China, especially in this part of the, the country. Uh, how higher altitude and mountainous terrains. And these bridges, oh my God, it's shaking because there are cars driving over um, <laughs> the, the, the surface of the bridge. But our safety are insured. Just to say that to our viewers. And more bridges like this are being built. Many of them have been holding world records. And all these bridges are mainly for to connect people from more remote areas to the outside world, to the rest of China to see the economic opportunities to lift, you know, to bring food to all the tables of 1.4 billion people. And I think I'm going to wrap up this episode of this live stream. But furthermore, I'm going to visit one of the largest railway stations here in China. And also I'm going underneath the earth to check out a lab, lab, uh, a lab in the future in the neighboring Sichuan province. Thanks for watching. But now let's give the camera back to the view of the beautiful valley of the Jingsha River. And thanks for watching and stay tuned.